Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us on today's show. We have a good one planned for you where in the first part of the program, as we normally do, we have an interview, but this is going to be a lot of fun because we will be talking to the makers of a product called Forum and yeah, uh, uh, Facetto will be joining us here on the program to talk all about their products and what they're doing and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Fun. And in the second part of the program, time time given, we will be doing computer and technology news where, hey, we're going to head off into the weekend, making sure you're all caught up on this week's big news. So with that being said, a couple of things, including ComputerAmerica.com, that will have everything from any articles that we talk about, any videos that we show, uh, a link to our guest website, all that will be made available on our homepage for the next 10, uh, well, two weeks, 10 days, uh, 10 show days, two weeks. And yeah, all that can be found right there on the homepage. And so if you're driving, if you're busy, if your hands are tied, don't worry, we got you covered. You can check it out there. Uh, let's see. So with that being said, um, welcome into the show again. Happy that you could all join us. And we will be giving away a prize from our social media contest from Logitech later on in the program. Uh, also, be sure to check out the live video feed from OWC. We are still a radio program, but if you feel like watching uh, myself and our guests and our product as we kind of go through it, uh, hey, we give you that option too. All right, so with all of those out of the way, let's go ahead and just bring on our guests and get talking about you know what it is that they offer, why they built it, how they built it, that kind of thing. So joining us on the program is Mr. Koi Christmas, and he is the CEO of again Facetta, and uh, yeah, he's going to be helping us through you know what they do over there. So Koi, welcome on to Computer America. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for. Uh have me on the call. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So let's um, let's start at the beginning and give us a bit of background on uh, you know on Facetto, on the company, on yourself. How did you find yourself uh, you know kind of working with them? I mean, what's your background? <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. So um, I apologize. I've been getting over a little bit of a cold here. But the uh, yeah, no, I, the company Facetto was actually started back in 2013 by myself and my business partners, uh, Luke Malpass and Parnell Lutz. We actually went into this uh, looking to build an education platform, uh, but actually moved away from that. And one of the key components when we were building the education platform was cloud storage. Um, so Facetto actually was born, and it was, was really started with the cloud storage. If you were to go to facetto.cloud or you know, facetto.com, you could actually see the cloud storage mechanics, which we haven't touched for years now. But we, we started to build that, and that was our focus, was cloud storage, and then we moved into communication applications and started building that. Well, <clears throat> in that process of, of, of putting that together, um, we started to see where cloud storage, if you will, fails, and obviously the number one place that it fails is when you can't connect to it. Mm -hmm. So connectivity being an issue, then when you're trying to send information, let's say, to two local devices, something from, let's say, an Android phone to an iPhone, well, locally you have quite a bit of issues of it because of there being a platform restriction. So what we did was we sat there, or device restriction, if you will, and so what we did is we sat down and, and, and thought to ourselves, well, we need to make it so that we need a unified, if you will, operating system that would make everything work complete so that you could have something that would run on a Windows or you can have something that would run on Linux or something that was going to run on Android, uh, Apple, you know, or iOS, excuse me, a Mac, um, mm -hmm. any one of them, and so that it would run functionally the best way. Um, and that is actually what we moved away from on the cloud storage side, and we started building an operating system, which I know we're talking about Forum today, but that's, you know, Forum actually runs on the Gravity, uh, Gravity OS, which is an operating system that we built, uh, and is a true agnostic operating system, and this is the first device that we're selling that's running an application on top of the operating system that we have built. 
No, and I mean, there's a lot to break down there. Uh, the first thing would be, of course, you know, kind of starting with your roots in cloud storage and you decide to branch out into these other topics. I mean, my my initial question is why, you know, did you feel that this was missing in the current market, you know, that no one else is offering? Because a lot of different services offer, you know, a certain amount of cloud storage on their own. Uh, you, of course, have the big ones like Dropbox, Google, what have you. Uh, what was really missing from their offerings? Do you offer some kind of privacy? Is it, uh, you know, the customization that you provide? I mean, why did you feel that the big players weren't doing it to your standard? Well, you know, from the cloud storage side, um, you know, if we're talking about Dropbox, Box, other companies out there, like, you know, you send it, right. whatever those ones might be out there, Google Drive, so forth and so on. Um, they were doing, I mean, they, they, not to say they were doing it wrong, because mm -hmm. we didn't feel that they were, Though the big thing that we brought it to when we did when we were building our cloud storage was we wanted to make it even more secure. And, and it's funny because a couple of years ago, security wasn't really a, a, as big of a deal as it's, it's slowly becoming. People really didn't care. Uh, not, I'm not saying people don't care, but they weren't as concerned about it, if you will, as they are seeming to become more concerned about it today. Um, and what we did was we actually implemented basically, if you will, we always called it, it's like Dropbox plus WhatsApp on steroids. And so we implemented WhatsApp, if you will, the, the internal communication, texting, messaging, however you want to call it. We built that inside the, the cloud storage platform. So then you were able to share documents and communicate within the single program, and you're not then sharing the information outside of the program, giving people the opportunity of where to find the files. So it was a, it was a really good business-to-business -to -business tool, great for working with people as well. And we built a lot of technologies in there that many of them we have patents on today that uh, you know, we, we, we created to make it so that it would run better and more effectively. Again, <clears throat> the area where Dropbox, Box, and those other companies fail is it, it, just like we would fail is when you can't connect to the cloud. That was the key. And it's like, okay, so, and, and, and it sounds like, well, gosh, everybody's connected to the cloud. That's not true. I mean, how, I mean I'm in Superior, Wisconsin here, and I could go a mile in any direction and all of a sudden lose complete connect, connectivity. And I'm in a town, of, I mean, it's only 26,000 people. We're, next, we, we're right next to Duluth, which has got a couple hundred thousand people. But still, you know, you've got interference because of hills or whatever it might be. The mm -hmm. radio signal's not as strong. You make it so, that, yes, you're, there are times that you're not able to be connected or if you are connected, it's a poor connection. And for that reason, you know, we were like, oh, man, you know, we really, and we were focused on the cloud storage piece. We were like, we want to be able to have it so people can access their content easily. Right. And we looked at all the products that are out there in the marketplace because we said, okay, to do that, you need to have it local. And we looked at all the products that are out there, all the, let's call them the wireless hard drives, the wireless SSDs. We looked at all those. And quite frankly, they were, in our opinion, were not, not up to par. They were not great in, in the sense that, yes, you could put your content on there, but moving your content around was difficult. Uh, and furthermore, you know, it really was, let's call it dumb storage. All you could do is read and write to it. You couldn't do anything with that, with that data on the actual storage device. The applications accessing it was, you know, subpar. You know, it was like an afterthought. <laughs> So that's how we started merging, and, and for people that are familiar with our company, they know that we had a product out there that was called Link, L-I-N-K, not to confuse the day here, but, you know, and we, were, we actually were at CES for many years. We've won quite a few awards on the Link product, and what it was is really what Link stands for is, is, is a product that can, a, a device that connects all local devices and removes all the, the, the gaps in technology, knocks down all the walls, whether it be a, an operating system uh, limitation or a device limitation or connectivity limitation. Basically, we made it so that if you put your file on this device, you're going to have access to in, on in, anything. It doesn't matter if you're pulling out a Nintendo DS or you're using an Xbox 360 or you're going to pull out the, your, 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 your uh, Microsoft tablet or whichever it might be, you're going to be able to have access to this content. It's not going to have issues like, oh, you know, well, the, the connectivity is number one or it's not the right file type or whatever it might be. All those would be yesterday's news. So that's why we started building that product. And in doing so, <clears throat> to make it so that it would function the way we wanted to, the only way to do that, <laughs> when we got to it, and it wasn't our intention, uh, it slowly started to morph to that, is to build an operating system that is agnostic. So we literally got down to the kernel level and started building everything up, and we've built an operating system that will run independently on its own device. And it can run on ARM processors, x86, but it can run independently on its own device, or it can also work, work in conjunction with you know, any other platform that's in existence today, and anyone that comes out of existence tomorrow or the next day. That's how we have built this. And right. the idea behind that was to make it so a developer, life is simpler. I mean, we, we've, we have, we've, for people that have developed and they've done that, 
It can be very stressful because you're managing multiple different code bases. You're like, take Dropbox, for example. They want their application to run on iOS. They want the application to run on Android. They want it to run on Windows Phone or whatever it may be. Well, they're writing, they're managing multiple code bases to make it work on every single one of those because, you know, to, to make it work with the native aspects of it, you've got to run the application. You've got to write it in that language. That becomes, you know, uh, cumbersome, if you will. And it's a lot of stuff to maintain. And to be like, well, wait, it should be simple. I should be able to write it one time. And it plays on everything. That would be nice, right? That would right. work. Because when you get down to it, I mean, computer, all the computers, and let's call phones, everything a computer, they all do the same thing. So why is it not able to work? The functionality is the same that's there. You know, the same calls you're trying to do, they just wrote in a different language. So what we did is we built an operating system so that once this gets out there, and we're in our infancy right now, for years to come, or years to go from now, when someone sits down and we release the, the uh, developer kit and we put the API so everybody can work with them and they start to build off of this, they're going to see what we have done now with like Forum, for example, and why Forum is so absolutely amazing and wh how we've built it is that we've made it so that it is one code base that you're managing. We can build the stuff in record time compared to other you know, development teams out there with smaller people because it's easier to maintain and to build off of. And it also allows us to do a lot of cool tricks that uh, you know, it wasn't available before because you always had some sort of limitation. So not to get long-winded on it, but that's, that's the direction we went there. And it, was, it wasn't when we intended when we were building Facetto, that was not our game plan. It wasn't like, hey, let's go build this. It just, because of necessity, we started to build it and it just continued to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and millions and millions of lines of code later, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's the best way that products come about is that you, you have a need and you fill that need with, uh, you know, with a very specialized and efficient product. So you know, great to hear the backstory on that. And you know, talk a bit more about you know, the, uh, the forum and obviously this is the device that's going to connect everything. Uh, and, and by the way, you know, we just had our Linux show yesterday, so uh, you know, we, we're, we're definitely uh, appreciative of Linux. And so you know, being agnostic across all those different operating systems and, hey, throwing that in there as well, I'm sure the corporate world loves you. And let's talk about Forum, though, specifically, and talk about, you know, so this seems to be kind of your, your hub, your Wi-Fi router kind of deal on the go. Um, talk about, you know, physically what it is, uh, give us some dimensions and talk about, you know, kind of where this would fit into people's, you know, maybe if they're, tra if they travel, where this would fit into the equation for them. Sure. Well, let me give a, <clears throat> a real quick backstory as to why, you know, cause I, we do have people go, okay, why'd you go this way? <laughs> Meeting solutions marketplace, right? I mean, it doesn't sound like a big marketplace. It, it's a 44 point something, 44.1, I think, billion dollar marketplace, meaning solutions marketplace. It's big, right? Mm -hmm. it, that, that covers a lot of, uh, a lot of things, but it, it's not a small marketplace. And we all meet, you know, we're in business. Even personally, we all meet and we always want to share information. And so I, showing off the product that I, I've been meeting with all the big name companies you could possibly imagine. I've met with all of them. They've called us. They love the product. Let's sit down and talk over the past couple of years. And when I would go to meetings, the thing that would drive me the nut, the, the, the most nuts, is let's say I go have a meeting over at Apple. Well, okay, if I'm walking in with, let's say, a Lenovo tablet that only uses USB-C, you know, and they're running everything off Apple Play, or they're, they're, they're what I want to connect to, to present, or they want to use their dongles and stuff, it, it doesn't work, right? Um, or let's say that I'm, I'm, I'm over doing a meeting over at, let's say, uh, at Kingston or something like that, and I'm doing a meeting with them, and I'm, I have a MacBook with me. And again, their dongle doesn't work properly. So I, and the word dongle is a funny word to begin with. I don't know if adults should be saying it, just either. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it, it goes, do we, you know, bottom line is you run into an interface issue. So what we did was, to present our product, was we said, hey, how about when I walk into the room, I don't need to connect to anybody's stuff. How about I just walk in the room, turn on my device, and tell everybody that brings their own devices with them to pull out their device, and my presentation and all the stuff I want to talk about is on everybody else's device. And I said, that would be cool. So we wrote the program. And we did it in a very simple, simplistic way, not the one you see today, but we wrote it in a simplistic way, simplistic way. And when we showed it off, and I'd go to meetings and, and sit down with people, and they'd see this. They're like, how are you doing this? This is amazing. What is this? You know, this is great. This changes everything. And I'm like, oh, that's great. And slowly as I heard it, not once or twice after a hundred times, a hundred different meetings, I hear from people just being blown away by it. I went, you know, I, this is, I think is our product. So Forum is exactly that. We had many names for it before, but we, we landed on Forum. And, and the reason why is because you really, once you start to talk, you turn it into your Forum. And it doesn't matter where you are. You literally can have a meeting in a porta potty if you want to. You can have it not saying you would want to do that, but you can have your meeting anywhere you want to now because of what the technology brings to you. So Forum is a very small, fits in your fifth little pocket. I mean, it's like 2.3 inches by 1.7 inches by a quarter inch thick. That's a full-blown computer <laughs> that's like super small, okay, smaller than a Raspberry Pi. 
you're able to pop that thing in your pocket, pull it out, plug it in, or put it in a battery pack if you want to, turn that thing on, and now anybody within your vicinity is your audience. You can tell anyone here, hey, tell you what, go to your device, whether it's your phone, your tablet, not a flip phone, but pretty much everything else. I said Nintendo DS, we have done it on that one too. Pull it out, go to your settings section, click on Wi-Fi. Mine's called, my, the Wi-Fi SSID I have out there is called Koi's Forum. Click on Koi's Forum. Now go to your browser. Now, you notice I didn't say you have to download anything. You don't have to download an app or anything like that if you don't want to. You can download the app once we make it available, but you, know, you don't have to. So they can open up any browser they want to. doesn't matter what type it is, even old Internet Explorer. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. You can pull it out there. But type inside there, my.forum, and mm -hmm. boom, the meeting has started. My presentation is now on everybody else's device. Now, you could say, well, that's cool. So when I change my slide, it changes on everybody else's device. And that is pretty cool. But it goes beyond that. And this is where we change the meeting altogether because now we're making it so you're going to be able to interact with your audience. It's not you standing up there doing a PowerPoint. Now you're actually interacting with your audience. And here's how you do that. On the right-hand right hand side of, of the, the person that's the participants that's watching is, is their toolbar. They can tap on that toolbar during the presentation. They can exit out so they don't see it. But they can tap on it, and it opens, expands to the left, from the right to the left. And inside there, it has all the documents that a person is wanting to attach to a presentation. How many times have you seen in a presentation, and you're talking to people and stuff, and you could be talking about, like you just said, you're talking to Linux. What if you wanted to throw down a new Linux kernel or something like that on top of it? You could do that. You could upload it to Forum. Okay? And it would sit there, and then maybe you hit slide seven, and you want to start talking about this. Well, boom, the person could open it up and go to you know, see that document there, click on it, and download it. And it could be any file type you possibly could imagine. It could be a hyperlink, whatever you want. They now have that content on their device. They don't have to come ask you for it. You've made it available to them. Now, if you don't want to put anything on there, you don't have to, but you've made that available to them. Furthermore, let's say that the, the audience wants to ask you a question. The participant goes, you know, I want to ask you a question, but you're talking. They don't want to forget it. They're in the back of the room, whatever it might be. Again, they pop open that side. They type in the question right there. Boom, it pops up on your form. You've got the question now. Someone asks the same question. It says it's been on there twice. You've now got a list of questions that when you're done with your presentation, you can pull it out and answer those questions. The person wants to stay anonymous. They are anonymous in this situation. You can even share your contact information between each other. So a person that's a participant, they join. They go, you know what? I want this guy to have my information. I want him to reach back out to me. Please contact me. person types in their username, email address, put, or not username, their full name, their email address, and like whatever way they want to get contacted, send it to the, the the uh, presenter, the presenter now has it, or they can download the presenter's information too. Probably already has that, but there you go. Now the final piece of this, which makes it exciting, at least to me, mm -hmm. is, and I wouldn't say final, I've got a couple more fun things, but one of the cool things I like as well is the poll aspect. And the reason why I like the polls is now you really have, you can imagine, especially when you're doing you know, good presentations that are, you want that audience feedback, you're able to ask them, hey, what color do you like better, red or blue, and you can get those answers back, and you can say, oh, 45% of people like red, you know, and 55% like blue. You can have that, or you can ask a multiple choice question, or you can ask a right or wrong, you know, yes or no, well, however you want to do that. And all of that information is, again, stored on your forum. The person that's participating has nothing on their device. It's just running through the RAM. It's running through the browser. Even if they're going through the app, it's going to be the same situation unless you want to make it so they're able to download that content and store that content. So it's really pretty clean in that way. Now, what we don't have available yet, and we, know we, have a, a, we are launching a product here, and we're going to make available 25 units this year, is that we have actually completely in, embedded this with Alexa skills. So it's also kind of fun, and I, I've got a kick out of that, and I, I really get a kick out of it, because I can sit in a meeting and I say, hey, Alexa, start my presentation. And, and all of a sudden, my presentation starts on everybody's device, and they're like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And then I'm like, I can tell Alexa, Alexa, next, Alexa, go back. But I can also say to Alexa, I can say, Alexa, play movie one. And now the movie that I have uploaded onto my forum that might be talking about whatever or attached to that presentation that's talking to a point that I'm going after, let's say after slide four, I can now say, Alexa, play that, uh, play that movie. And now that movie plays on everybody's device. And so I'm getting a move, you know, I got an inspirational moment. The video plays. They get excited. Wow, that's really cool stuff. They could download that movie too if I wanted them to have that aspect of it. I tell Alexa to stop the movie, continue back on. And I, actually, I use the word focus. I say, Alexa, focus, please. And it goes back to where we're at in the presentation. If someone is inside the presentation and starts taking screenshots of my presentation with I have Alexa connected, it tells me that such and such device has taken screenshots. Do I want to disable that person's device? And I could kick them right off of the presentation, and huh. they can't join back on. That's, that's so there cool. is, there, 
yeah, there is a lot of really cool mechanics that we have in here. And this is, again, we're at our infancy. This thing will continue to grow. And, it's just, and it works just like your phone does or your computer does and stuff. I mean, it, as we start to continue to advance with the product, you buy one, you have one, you're using it. Six weeks later, a week later, a day later, you know how it is. Updates always come <laughs> uh, many and often. Uh, the updates come through. All you have, it pushes right through to your device. It, it, you know, we have all our over-the-air over update servers and stuff, so we do that. You don't have to go out and buy a new device. You don't have, it's not cumbersome. We've made it as foolproof as it can be for that person that's on the go. And that's the big thing. Is the people are on the go. We don't have time for two or three or four steps. We need a one-button movement, and we've got to rock and roll. We don't have time to fumble around for a meeting for 10 to 15 minutes. Not everybody wants to huddle around a 15-inch screen lap. Top. We want to make this simple. And not to mention, now we've made it so the meeting doesn't have to happen in the meeting room. So you take a coach, for example. I like using the coach as an example. I think that's fun. Mm -hmm. You take a coach that's traveling, and he's got the bus of all the kids right there, and they're going to a sporting event, and he's like, you know, I'd really love to go to these plays with these kids. Well, they all have their devices on them. He just says, hey, everybody, you know, no, people aren't supposed to get a seat. Safety first, right? So he can just say, hey, everybody, he can spin around a little bit. Hey, everybody, pull your devices out real quick here. Boom, connect to my forum. Now the plays are on everybody's devices. Here, guys, I want you to watch what Johnny did right on the, in this particular play. And he presses play. Now it's, now it's playing on everybody. You can rewind, fast forward. And same thing's happening on everybody's screen. You're talking about something that has not been able to happen before on a local level. You could do these type of things with the Internet. But not everybody has access to the Internet. And then again, if they do, it's not always connectivity you know, is, is, is going to be there in the, in the strongest sense. So we've made it so this happens on a local level. Now someone could go, well, Koi, you know, how powerful could this thing be? Well, right now, I mean, we've, we've tested it you know, between you and me and the fence post and everybody else listening. Um, you know, we've tested this thing and got it to 52 devices locally. That's not bad. Okay. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. 52 I, I, devices. I mean, for, for anyone out there watching the video portion, we, you know, we are on your Indiegogo page, and you have a video of you streaming to nine different devices at the same time, and that was pretty impressive. So 52, that's, that's really good. 52. Um, we, are, we are going out saying you can go to 25, okay? But, you know, I, I, you're going to be able to go to more, but we're going to hold it at 25, okay? Right. Um, you know, you'll be able to do more, but that's going to be our, what we're going to say our, what you're supposed to be able to accomplish. I, I got you. That being said, mm -hmm. and I've done this as well, I've, gone to, I've done presentations to hundreds of people this way, and all you have to do is connect link to the local network. And you connect a link, and then they just connect to your same SSID, and bam. Now you can go to tens of thousands as long as the infrastructure is inside there, you can make it happen. I mean, you could hook form up realistically to, you know, a football stadium and everybody inside there, and now everybody is able to watch a presentation or whatever you videoing you've got going on or sharing content between each other on a local level. I mean, it's extremely powerful of what you're able to accomplish. I, I, I feel like you're one sentence away from being like, if you hook it up to NASA's servers, then you're able to connect everyone in the world at the same time. And it's like, <laughs> all right, but, but I, I'm, you know, we're talking about this and a lot of questions are running in my head about, you know, why something like this wasn't happening before. And there are a couple of reasons um, that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm going to, you know, kind of pick you and see what, uh, you know, how you kind of overcame a couple of these. The first one, though, is I want to know how you did this, because to me, the you know, it, it kind of sounds like, and please, if none of this is right, uh, feel free to correct me, but it kind of sounds like a mix between a hotspot so everyone can connect to it, uh, its own operating system, like you said, so everything kind of works within a singular app. And then, you know, maybe some kind of, of course, you know, a program running in, you know, running on your OS uh, mixed with some kind of hard drive so you could upload files, download files, things like that. Um, it's just like a mix of a lot of different uh, technologies that I think people use day to day, but it's simplified and unified. You know, I, I really couldn't say it much better than that. You're, you are absolutely correct. I mean, it, it is... You could say, hey, it's a hard drive plus a computer plus a router plus, you know, you, you can keep going the plus, plus, pluses, and, and you're, you are right. And that, you know, that's what I'm saying. When we were building this thing, it's like, wow, you can go in so many different directions with this. And the reason why we went to this direction is because it made the most amount of sense. Excuse me. The, um, the, I, I would like to say that, at least from our opinion, mm -hmm. the reason why we haven't seen this built out there before is because I don't think anybody's been focused on really like how do we make this happen differently. 
you know, it's kind of like the, if it's not broke, don't fix it type of thing. Why look at it from out of the box? But I also think that some of the best ideas are people that look at it from outside the box and go, there's a problem with the system. We need to make it better. Every single person that's in business today that has meetings, there is, there's not a single one of them that can sit there and say, I have not experienced a technology issue inside of a meeting. Every one of them is going to raise their hand. If they're not, they're lying. They're going to raise their hand. They're going to go, oh, yeah, I've been there before. And that's just in the meeting room. And then you could ask them again, would you have rather had the meeting somewhere else? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd much rather have it at the golf course if you want to know the truth. You know, I'd much rather have it at my house, whatever it might be. You go, oh, yeah, I'd love to do that. So what we did is we had to come from outside of the box. We had to look outside and make it happen. And to do that, we couldn't build it off a platform that already exists. Because if you built it off a platform that already exists, an operating system already exists, it's then going to be shooed in that direction. So that is where... I, 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 I'm sorry, just real quick, but it sounds like what you're like, you're not really competing uh, when, you know, maybe to the extent in the future you might be, but um, a lot of big companies have, you know, large presenting rooms, uh, you know, large theaters have different ways of presenting. And, you know, I'm not going to say whether or not your device can, you know, will be able to do that in the future, but really it sounds like what you're competing against is the traditional person goes to an audience and hands out pieces of paper with their message on it and they stand in front of a podium and they deliver their message like you're not competing against you know the epson uh you know the epson projectors and uh large theaters and things like that you're competing against the person who has to print out 200 flyers and has to give you know a dozen uh you know a a, a, do a dozen presentations to a dozen different audiences in a do dozen different places that's what you're you know kind of replacing it seems like well, we're definitely hitting that marketplace. I think we complement the ones that are out in the marketplace today. I mean, if you look at the meeting solutions, I'm going to use one for an example. <clears throat> There's a product out there called AirTame. It mm -hmm. is a great product. I believe they went on Kickstarter. They did a great job on Kickstarter. We have the product here in the office. We used to use it. The issue with AirTime, again, is that it's one device that you can buy. It hooks up via HDMI in the back of your TV, and then you have to download applications, or you can try to go through the IP address to make it work. It has its, uh, its ups and downs, as almost a, a good chunk of software in the world, software hardware, does. But the limitation, again, <clears throat> is that you're just sharing your screen to one device. And it's like, okay, that's, that's good. But this is one particular situation. When I was going to different meeting places all the time, they didn't have AirTame installed. They didn't have AirTame at all. Some people right. have AirPlay. Some people have AirTame. Some people have different applications. Some people have these little, these little, hot, these little the buses that you would plug in the side, USB on the side of your, your device and press a button and, it, and then now my screen pops up there and stuff. That is what they did. And what we did is we said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. We're going to put our stuff on everybody's device. And we're going to make it so that if I want to pass the token on to somebody else, I can do that. And all they got to do is just put their stuff on there. And that, that's how easy we've made it. We've made it so, it, again, it's, it's coming from a different approach. So I would say that you are right. We are definitely hitting that market. And, but we're also complementing other ones out there because our product works with other devices like that out there. And we, we're, we're in addition to. I'm not trying to compete in the sense and say theirs is wrong in right. any way because not, we're not trying to say that at all and ours is right. What we're doing is saying we're bringing new life to the meeting. We're bringing something new and exciting. The days of doing a presentation and the exciting part was your animations on your PowerPoint, that's gone. Now you're fully interacting with your audience, whether it's an audience of three, and it's an audience of eight, it's an audience of, of, of 800. You are now engaging with them. You're able to share the content that you want them to go home with. They're going to have that with them. Right? They don't have to go to a web address. They don't have to email you later. They're going to have it from right there. You, want it, you, you have something passionate you saw three minutes before your presentation. You can upload it to your forum, and now you're able to speak about that. It's not something you have to turn something in earlier on and have to go make some large adjustments. It's all simplified. It's very easy. And again, this product is so small, you keep it in your pocket. Now, there are other things you could do with this product too that, that makes it more exciting. I mean, you could, you could turn this into something that say you want to do a family gathering and you have people together and you just went on your big trip to Disney. You can upload all your photos to it and now you can sit there and everybody can sit there and look at all the photos on all their devices and they could download them all of them too. I mean, I, it's a funny story. I mean, I couldn't make this one up. It was so good. I was sitting in, in, uh, in San Francisco and I was meeting with the company as well and we're going to lunch and they're asking me to talk about the product and they said, who's your targeted audience? And there was a lady over to my left of us and there was, there was about 10 of them that are sitting there eating and one of the ladies had recently had a baby and she was you know, going through the pictures and stuff and as she was passing, she had to pass the phone around because it was a video. Mm -hmm. She had to pass it around because it was too large for text message, <clears throat> and there was no other way to get it to them. 
So this other one lady was like, hey, could you upload it here and send me a link to this and all this other stuff. If she would have had the forum in her pocket, and now I know it's focused on meeting solutions, but if she'd have had forum in her pocket, she could have had that video uploaded onto forum and everybody could have watched it at the same time and now could have downloaded it. And how powerful is that? That's, that's the thing is that we need something that makes it so we can move content around anywhere. That is what we've been focused on, but we, we spun it and said we're going to go into this meeting solutions place. And the big reason why we did this was because of this one reason right here. Think about this. When I was doing the presentations with this product, everybody in that room was like, how are you doing this? I need one of those. I want to get one of those. I want to do my presentations this way. <laughs> it's because it resonated with the audience. But Koi, uh, we're actually, man, this hour's flying by. We're actually running into the break. Would you mind staying over and so we can continue uh, in, uh, um, on the other side? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Perfect. So everyone, we're talking to Mr. Koi Christmas. He is the CEO of Facetto, and we're talking about Forum. Everyone, stay tuned. More Computer America right after this. We are all Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. Greece is cheap. But the airfare costs a fortune. Paris? Not much closer. And again, airfare... What about Puerto Vallarta? Let's face it, flying anywhere is just too expensive. Wait, what's this? low-cost airlines with one call to low-cost airlines you'll drastically slash your travel costs we're talking insanely low airline prices to any of your favorite destinations where would you like to go london rome costa rica australia wow that's cheap so why wait call now to learn how crazy cheap it is to fly anywhere in the u.s or international our prices are so low we can't publish them the only way to get them is to call to instantly hear the most amazing best deals on airline travel. It's that easy. So call now and start packing. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. That's 800-215-4461. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 32 minutes past the hour as we continue on here. And hey, you know, we're having a lot of fun talking with our guests today. Uh, Facetto, they make a number of products, but their newest one, one that we're talking about today, is indeed Forum, which, hey, you know, I think now we're starting to get a much clearer picture on why it has the name that it does. Because it's your own personal forum and you get to, you know, you get to share your message with, uh, you know, with those you want. So, uh, Koi, you know, uh, just for the break, you were, you know, you, you mentioned the story and how uh, sharing large files, was, which is something that I, you know, kind of run into quite often as well. Uh, you know, you focus it on a on one particular use case, which I guess from a marketing standpoint, you have to, you can't just, you know, shotgun shell it. You got to really have a focused uh, audience, but it, it can be used for anyone who wants kind of that personalized cloud or, you know, that ability to share with multiple people, uh, you know, individual things. So one thing that's kind of coming up in my head constantly uh, is that that's great. That's cool. I like that. That's good. Um, but one question I like to ask people is always about security. You know, you mentioned that security uh, in a lot of products nowadays, especially with the Internet of Things, uh, tends to be an afterthought. People think of security as something that is either, you know, I think maybe the companies think that it's the user's responsibility to be secure and the users think that it's the company's responsibility to make their product secure. Um you're giving a lot of access to a lot of different devices. You know, uh, obviously there seem to be certain kind of thresholds where like you have to specifically upload or select files to share, but through any kind of connectivity like this, um, 
you know, bad things can happen. Was security a focus in this at all? And how, you know, how have you baked security into form? Well, you're right. That security is is critical when you're dealing with files. No matter what those file types are, it can be anywhere from your photo to, you know, a, a sensitive document. I mean, when you're getting access to something like this, it is <clears throat> when you can make content so readily available. It, it's it's kind of like the old. Uh, uh, the Spider-Man type of thing, you know, where where, where uh, Uncle Ben was talking to him and telling him, it's like, you know, what was it? Great power, great, power, great, great response. responsibility. Yep. Yep. Same type of situation here is that, okay, great. Now your content's available everywhere. How do we lock this thing down? So, you know, we, coming from a security mindset beforehand, we've got multiple levels of security, where, all the way down from a hardware level, um, whether you're running from encrypted drives and stuff, up to the sense of where, you know, we're working with your typical passwords and stuff. But we also work with WEPA and everything else when you're trying to protect the content in flight. So we've got, you know, we've got security for it at rest, as well as security when it's in flight. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason for doing that is, again, because of the content that you're sharing. We also separate your content from what you're presenting. So look at, think of it like two different drives that are not connected. You've got, you're moving your content that you're wanting everybody to view onto a particular drive. And if they wanted to get something, that's all they're going to have access to is that presentation. They're not going to have access to everything else that's residing on forum. If you want to move certain documents for them to be able to download, those documents would move along with the presentation and they can have access to those. You can password protect those, those, those documents if you want to. You can give limited read and, uh, read and write access depending on what you want to do with file types. And then of course you've got, you know, the main thing is you've a hierarchy of a password of the device itself. We've also made it so that let's say you leave your device somewhere, we've got ability for you to, act, in a sense, locate the device, <clears throat> and if you're not able to locate it and it's away from you, you have the ability to remote wipe the content as well. So we have thought through the best way we can to make it the most secure. Obviously, there's, no matter how well you secure it, unfortunately, there's people out there that try to take advantage of a situation and work around it. But what we could say is that we are dedicated to making sure that that content is protective. And if there was something that was to come out and says, oh, someone's managed to hack this to make this work, we would figure out a way to lock that down as fast as possible, which is what I would expect from anybody that's building any type of computer for that right. nature. Right now, and and you know, just some of the examples that you gave earlier, uh, you know, maybe if you're doing sales projection or you're you know throwing out numbers that are confidential, you definitely don't want someone to you know maybe sit outside the door and be able to snag everything that you're broadcasting uh, to the people inside or you know something of that nature. Um, and you also mentioned the element of kind of privacy, being anonymous, uh, being able to ask your question, and you know, don't get me wrong, that's going to be great for a number of settings where you know people. People don't want to be called out, but they still have a question. Um, talk about identifying people who, you know, kind of join in on the session that you're presenting. Uh, is there a way to make people kind of uh, maybe put in a username? Is there any kind of way to identify people? Uh, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so <clears throat> the answer is yes and yes. I mean, uh, we, we do want to give, we give a lot of permissions or uh, capabilities, if you will, to the presenter themselves as well as to the participant. If the presenter is doing a pre presentation and they want to keep it just simple, they can then have it so that anybody can just hop right on and do their thing. If they want to make it so a person, they want it, hey, you've got to put your username in here. You've got to add a username to it. Then, then they make it so that when you hop on, it's like, please enter your username. You have to add a username. They, the, the filter is turned on or off by the presenter. Furthermore, if you're looking at the presenter status uh, screen, and I love this portion of it because, again, me being the presenter, I have the ability to see every device. Even if I have two, 300 devices connected, I can see every single device that's on there. I can choose if I, how to manage that device. I can kick them off. I can keep them on um, if I want to keep them on the network. Um, I can also see when the questions are asked, who the questions are coming from. You can do it so that it's anonymously based in the sense that it's anonymously that in the sense that when the person's asking the question, no one else will see this, so that's where the anonymous aspect of it comes in. I can see which device sent me the uh, information. Now, I can't tell who Samsung JY7321 you know, is because I don't know what their device name is. However, you know what I mean, if they want to identify themselves or they have their device identified, I can see that aspect of it too. Um, it is, it's really nice from that 
again, I, I say that, and I, and I really mean it, it's really nice to be able to know exactly what's going on in your environment. So that we put the presenter in control. So they're able to not only give your presentation, but they can manage all aspects of what's going on in the presentation. They can choose, let's say that I'm using, I'm going to use, say I'm using a laptop, if you will, connected to a, a monitor, and everybody's watching that. I can now pull my phone up and walk around the room, and I can choose on the monitor either I want the presentation to be shown, if I want everybody's questions to be shown, if I want my notes to be shown, whatever I want, and then I can control the presentation from my phone as I'm walking around the room just like I would if I had a clicker on a computer. And it makes it so you give that versatility now to the actual um, individual. You can even control your audio, you can control the video, what you want to go to what device, so forth and so on. So we put, and this is also baked into the security aspects of it too you were asking earlier. All this kind of ties together so that the user and the, and the participants are getting the best meeting they possibly can they can have uh, from a local level makes perfect sense and I, I mean this is all sounding really great glad that you thought of security but you know it's just one of those things that if you are maybe presenting for seven people in a room and you see a squirrely eighth device you're like mm, maybe that eighth device shouldn't be here and you can kick them off so makes perfect sense. I, I definitely like that. Um, so the connectivity standard that you're going for, uh, I'm sure that in some cases, Bluetooth would have worked better. In some cases, Wi-Fi would have worked better. better. Um, and there are a number of different, uh, you know, I'm sure you didn't want to walk around with a giant uh, USB hub, you know, kind of attached to your hip. Um, how does, you know, does this thing use Wi-Fi? Does it need external Wi-Fi? Uh, what, what does it need to actually get all these devices talking to each other? So forum works just like, oh, well, you used the word hotspot, but what does, forum spins up its own wireless network. That little device spins up, and as I was saying, we've, we've made it work for 52, but 25, guaranteed, 25 devices within the area of you will be able to connect to that device. And again, they just go through, they, they open the device, the participant, the person opens up the device, they go into the settings, they go into Wi-Fi, they choose whatever you've named your, your SSID, and they hop on there. And then they go to the browser or they go through the app, and bam, they're having access to the content that you want them to have access to. Uh, it, it works very smooth, and when you look at the size, it's, it's almost unbelievable. I mean, you, I'm sure you've played with many different routers that are out there and stuff and access points and you go, wow, these things are all massive. I, and I, you look, you and, know, and, 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 and I mean, just to plug our, uh, some of the content that we do, we just did a review of uh, the Orbi, which is actually like the size of a football, uh, the Netgear Orbi and the Netgear Nighthawk, uh, you know, 6300, something like that. I mean, routers are like half the size of full blown computers at this point. So yeah. And, and that's what I kind of want to mention about the, uh, you know, the size of this device, because you have some product images up on uh, Indiegogo that show people, you know, sliding it into their pocket. It's, uh, it's <laughs> small. Yeah, it's tiny. Uh, it's the size of a matchbox, basically. It's funny because my business card actually has it on the business card, and it says, that, and it's half. It's like not even the size of a full business card. And it says it's actual size, and I give it to people, and they're like, "Is that really the size of the product?" I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "No way!" And I'll pull the product, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, it really is." And I'm like, yeah, it's 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 tiny. Um, we have we've built it in such a unique way that we brought the antennas so that we actually extended the antennas out. The the antenna structure again, connectivity is critical here. That's, again, we're moving content. Um, think of it just like you know you want to connect the internet, you want to be powerful. Well, you want to connect forum, we want to be powerful. So we thought ahead and said, you know what? What about when someone wants to do even larger range or they want to make something work even more? So we don't have it out now, but in the future to come, we will have a pack, a battery pack, if you will, a case that you'll be able to pop it into, and it'll expand the signal even larger so you can be able to get even more people connected on a local level, and it'll it, it amplify it. So instead of reaching, let's say, a range of 200 feet in diameter, you're going to be reaching, you know, uh, let's call it, uh, you know, a couple, couple quarter, about a quarter mile, if you will. So yeah. again, larger distance. Um, I mean, we can, with obviously the right, the right amount of antenna and the right amount of battery, we can amplify that signal quite a bit. So we can have a lot of fun. Uh, but it just comes down to what makes the most use sense for individuals. We will find out as we grow, and this is, I'm, we're really looking forward to feedback. As the devices go into people's hands, they start to take it out there, they start to use it in the real world, they come back and go, this is great, but 
we'd I, I need to access this. I need to get it so I'm, I'm constantly reaching out to 70 people or I'm always doing this at, you know, I'm, 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 I'm always at uh, concerts or something like that and I want to be able to use it there in this situation or at ball games or whatever it might be. They're at an event and they're like, this is what I need, so I need to make it larger. And then we're going to have to kind of evaluate it from a case-by-case basis and see what makes the most amount of sense. But eventually, you know, we're, we're trying to make it so that people, other people, will be able to tinker with this device as well and be able to uh, amplify it in their own way. Yeah, and so I think a, a good place to transition from here um, would maybe be this whole idea of feedback. Uh, we've had other Kickstarter, Indiegogo, crowdsourcing campaigns come on the program, and it's always a lot of fun to kind of ask them how it's been, because you mentioned that you already had uh, you know, a couple other products, maybe your, uh, you know, your cloud or your bonsai or you know, some of your other products go through this kind of uh, you know, same process, but... Talk about crowdfunding. I mean, just as someone who you know who's putting out a product, uh, because a lot of say that yeah, of course, you know, the money's nice and people showing interest in your product. And by the way, congratulations on getting completely funded. I think within uh, like you know two days, you guys got completely funded. So congratulations. Thank um, you. Yeah, but uh, you know, a lot of them come back and say the money's nice, but hey, that's what investors are for, and we can find money, but. The, the crucial part is the feedback, the, hey, we would like to see a feature, or hey, does this come in this color? Um, talk about just going through crowdsourcing. Is it a good thing? And how's your experience been? Well, you know, we have done crowdsourcing before. We've been successful with our, one of our previous ones. You know, you're talking about how connectivity. You know, this product actually uses the Arch Transport Layer, which is a patented uh, transport layer that we designed and we built, and we got patented, and it was issued back in February. We actually ran a Kickstarter on that product. At the time, we were calling it PDQ. Uh, we ran a Kickstarter. We were, the, I think, we're the second uh, highest-grossing Kickstarter in the state of Wisconsin, and we were successful at that. And that was years ago. <clears throat> we... Um, I mean, the crowdsourcing, the crowdfunding aspect of it, when we were doing it originally, was from a funding standpoint, like you said. You know, with us working with investors and stuff, we generate our revenue from there. For, for this particular moment, the reason why I like crowdfunding so much is the people that are on crowdfunding. First off, there's not many places you're going to be able to throw your product up on fresh and new without having to spend a lot of money on marketing and be able to hit a good target market. People that are on Indiegogo and, and, and Kickstarter, if you will, that are connected to that, they're watching these. They're looking for products they, because the people that are connected to this, they're the ambassadors. They're the new adopters. They're the ones that go, I need to be the cool kid on the block. I'm going to back this guy right here because he's got a great idea. I hope to get the product in my hand. And, and a lot of people do, do realize that a lot of these do fail, and even if they are funded, they sometimes still don't, are, are, are not able to deliver. But they, they, they take the risk, and, and it's great to have people to back you. And they get the product, and they go, this is awesome. And, and the part that I like the most is what I have found is that those early adopters that you get, those ambassadors, they are your voice. They talk about this to so many people, and you've got a collected group here that are looking for that particular piece. But they're also great about giving feedback. I mean, and it's constructive, good feedback. It's not like, oh, I got this, and it sucks. Mm -hmm. It's like, I got this, and you know what? It would be better if I could do A, B, and C. I love D, E, and F, but I really want to be able to do A, B, and C. Could you make that happen? And it's like, yeah, dude, it's software. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's the beauty of software. Software and hardware, that's the whole point. Let's have some fun with it. It's supposed to make your life easier, not more complex. So the answer is yes. I mean, the biggest thing for me from a crowdfunding standpoint is the, is the crowd. It's the people that are involved in it that go, you know, I want to be a part of this because I like cool news tech stuff. And some people are, you know, not all crowdfunding is done by tech. Some of it's done on, you know, on, on arts and stuff, which is fantastic. And, you know, books and so forth and so on and magic tricks and cards and, you know, sunglasses and you name it. It's like, dude, awesome. You know what I mean? If you've got an idea, use it. I think it's a fantastic fantastic platform for anybody out there that has an idea and do it. I mean, it's never for anybody who thinks you just throw it up on there and you walk away. Yeah. They're going to be, they're going to hate that aspect of it because no, it is a challenge. It's a grind. It's a work. You, I mean, you, if you want to sell a product, you've got to be devoted to it. This isn't like, Hey, I'm going to throw it on there and just do it at my lunchtime. No, it's going to wake up early in the morning, go to bed late at nine. You're going to be grinding to make this thing a success. As you said, we were able to knock it out in the first 48 hours. I mean, we worked really hard to get people lined up and stuff and we managed to knock it out, you know, 
it in a very short period of time with 100-something backers really quickly, loving the product. And we've got some feedback already. We've got some nice comments from people really kind of going, hey, dude, you know, I, I'm in, I got, we had one guy that commented and said, you know, I'm in a big company where we have like 14 meeting rooms on every single floor and stuff, and all of them use dongles, and you know what? None of them work. And it's like, dude, this is awesome. This is going to work for us great. You know, it's like, oh, fantastic. There you go. Case in point, dongles. So, you know, it's, it, it, I like the – I really do enjoy the crowd pl- funding platform, and I think it's – you know, if, 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 you, if I'm able to say, if you will, for anybody that's out there trying to do it and they, they're not able to raise money from investors because they're like, oh, you know, it's just too much of a grind or they don't want to deal with VCs because they're just, you know, sharks yeah. or you want, however you want to look at it and you find the negative because there's a lot of negatives when you start a company and you're trying to make this thing happen. This is where you can really pull it together yourself. It doesn't mean you have to have a $100,000 video. It doesn't mean you have to have a, a beautiful website. You know, you could do yourself a Squarespace. You can make this thing happen. You can shoestring budget this. If you've got the heart and the will to make it happen, you can do it. I mean, I truly, firmly believe in that, especially with today, with the power of social media. And if someone has a good idea, it's going to click. You know, the problem is, is that, you know, even ourselves, you know, we're getting ready to change the video. You know, not a lot of people know that, but now you do. We're getting ready to change our, our video, our Roger Featherbottom. Why? Constructive feedback. It's a great video. It's funny. People relate. It's great. But we have a lot of people going, it's a little bit long. And I get that. We broke it up in chapters. That's okay. But, you know, we like the feedback. And they said, you know, it would really be nice if we could hit these points right here. I want to see the product more in action. I want to see the stuff. I said, okay, fine. So we're knocking ourselves out a new video that we're going to throw up there and kind of see what kind of feedback comes in. Because it's also a marketing tool from us. Companies out there spend hundreds of thousands of dollars doing marketing research. We're able to put it out there and someone can watch a video and go, I don't like that one. Or go, this one works. And I can go, oh, hey, people from 24 to 44 relate better to this video versus people 35 to 55 relate better with this video right here. So you find something about your audience, which is beautiful. You find out if you're message is good, but it's not great. Or you're losing them somewhere. They're going, ooh, you're saying hotspot, and I'm thinking hotspot is going to have to add a SIM card to it. And you're like, ooh, maybe I need to change it to wireless network. The, the, the beauty between a crowd, uh, the crowdfunding platform is that it allows you to put something out there. You are going to get criticized from it, but it's from a positive standpoint. As long as people don't put their personal feelings or their ego in front of that, and they realize the, 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 all the feedback that you're getting is there to make it more positive, and it's to help you grow and become a better person or a better company, mm-hmm. it's going to be very successful for you. I very very well said, and I kind of hate to admit it, but uh, but you know I was checking out the video uh, at the top of the campaign, and I saw it was like eight minutes and twenty three seconds, and I was like, hmm, that's a bit long. It, no, no offense, I'm I'm glad that you're you're mm-hmm. looking to change it up. So uh, no, not taking it. it is it is funny. The guy's comical. It is. It, uh, is. it, it, it came. And anybody that's ever been in a meeting can relate to almost every one of those items, and they're gonna go, "I get it. That's fantastic." Um, and uh, again, we just turned. We just made this really short little novel, if you will. But it's it's almost one of those things. That I think if you throw up online from like a college humor standpoint and stuff, from meeting perspective, kind of like seven red perpendicular lines one, you know. But yes, we're gonna throw a new one up there. Um, I my goal is to try to have it done before the end of the weekend. But it's going to be about an under two-minute video, and I think it's just going to hit home really quick. So, you know, please Very come cool. back and take a look at it, definitely by midweek next week, and I'd love to get some feedback on it. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, and, and that's great. Uh, let's uh, talk real quick about price. Obviously, uh, Indiegogo campaign, they are, of course, you know, you offer things such as early word specials. I see that you have one here, uh, as well as other accoutrements that can come with the device itself. Um, talk about you know the you know the early bird price, the expected price that you're going to eventually sell this thing for, and then I also have a you know kind of a question because you mentioned uh, Amazon Alexa skills coming possibly in the future, and I see that's you know up here for a thousand bucks, and um, yeah, I'm kind of curious about you know Amazon Alexa and other things that you may be working on in the near future for this you know, for form. Sure. Let me uh, let me start from the top. So you know the product is uh, is, is going to be a three ninety nine retail. So we're doing a fifty percent promotion right now on the early bird. So we got it at one ninety nine for those that jump on board on the uh, Indiegogo campaign. We have the set amount that we're able to do that with. So the early bird special we're running through them, which is good, you know. But they're available now for the time being. <clears throat> we have ones I believe a single one, a double one, and a five pack of person who wants to pick up, which we had a couple people pick those up. Um, and then you have them bundled, so they can come with a sleeve. It's just a nice protective sleeve, so you can put this thing inside your pocket and, you know, you don't get the lint and stuff inside of it if you want to go that route. Not like you're going to hurt it, but, you know, 
for those people that want to make it ultra cautious. And then we have the battery pack, which is a really nice little thing. You just pop it in again, small enough you can put in your pocket. And then that one, you just, you don't have to plug it in anything and it automatically just runs. Leave it in your pocket for the whole entire meeting if you want to. That's not a problem. So the, the battery pack is definitely, I think, a, <clears throat> it's a nice plus to have with the product if for, for those people that are really, truly on the go. Um, the Amazon Alexa one, as I was saying earlier in our conversation, the Amazon Alexa, we only did 25 of those because we're not releasing the product to work with Amazon Alexa until next year. Mm -hmm. The people that are purchasing it now, <clears throat> they're getting a product that's going to, they're going to be ahead of the curve. They are truly going to be the early adopters or the ambassadors of it. They're the ones that can go, hey, hey I can do my full presentation. You can, everybody else can go buy one. But I can do my presentation and everything else with about 400 different commands. I can do it all by voice with mm -hmm. my Alexa. How cool is that? You know what I mean? That's like, that's like Star Wars stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> that's cool. You know, and it, that's, I mean, Alexa's awesome in a lot of different ways. Now what we've done is we take Alexa and we've now merged it into your business. And we've made it so it's fun. Uh, we've we've kind of tied it in. And for those people that are very creative, and I, that's, that's who I see purchasing this product is those ones that go, you know, like a marketing standpoint, they go, you know what, I could get this and I'm going to make my presentations epic now. They're going to be so different. And, and then those people can really get creative. Like they can go through them and they're like, you know what, boom, like I said, you can start a video mid-play. And if you really want to hit the passion and make it, bring it home, there you go. You know what I mean? That's the way to do it. So I, I, I use the Alexa aspect of it. I have it. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a Moto phone with the Alexa speaker on the back of it. And when I go to presentations, that's all I pull out. I don't even pull out my, uh, my form to show them. I just pull out my phone and set it there and start talking. And I start doing it. And I get everybody's looks like, how are you doing that? You know what I mean? It's just like that. It's amazing, you know? Uh, and, and I actually challenge people. I'm like, hey, <clears throat> do me a favor. Why don't you go ahead and uh, why don't you take a screenshot for me? And, you know, let's say the gentleman's name is Joe. Joe takes a screenshot, click, and says, hey, uh, this screenshot, you know, has been detected. Alexa tells me the screenshot has been detected on this device. What do you want the device? Uh, kick them off the device or kick them off the network. Boom, they're off the network. They can't get anything more. And I That's just cool. do it at the end of the presentation just for fun so they can see it. Because, you, like, again, you brought up security aspects of it. You know, what happens? You want to keep people secure. You know, so that's, that, that is some of the fun things that we're doing. And, again, that is at its infancy. By the time that we release it out with the actual Alexa skills, there'll probably be another 200 skills on top of it. Uh, on top of it, you'll be at, you know, just under, you know, six to 700 skills that are going to be available from a voice command. It's going to be a lot of fun. Right. No, and absolutely. And one last aspect that I kind of wanted to ask you about, because coming from Indiegogo Kickstarter, uh, we follow these campaigns and, you know, for better or worse, we tend to follow them, you know, through their inception, uh, which is great. You know, love talking about new products. But then we also follow them, you know, at least the more uh, publicized ones on their downfall as well. And some of them, I feel like they are passion projects. You mentioned that you could, you know, anyone can go out there and if they have a passion for what they do and they have a good product and they can really, uh, you know, kind of sell it to an audience, that's perfect. I, I love that aspect. It's great. But there's a second side to Kickstarter. And to me, it's really undersold. And it's the idea that you can sell 10,000 units of whatever. It doesn't matter. 10,000 units. Uh, a lot of people who start out in the garage and have a product uh, and have a product cannot make 10,000. And then when they have to scale up and they have to hire factory workers and they have to get a production line going and they have to actually ship these things to people's hands, that's where a lot of campaigns really fall apart. So I'm curious about, you know, about yours and, and about, you know, Facetto. I mean, do you, and this is, you know, self-evaluation time. Do you guys have it all together? Are you comfortable with your company that you can deliver a product to people's hands, uh, you know, if they happen to back your campaign? You know, it's, that's a good, you bring up a solid point. I mean, it, it is a solid point. To, to say you're going to do one thing and actually deliver are two different things. You know, <clears throat> I didn't want to put this product up there. I actually, I, I, I balked with Indiegogo a little bit because at first they're like, hey, you guys are a concept. I said, no, 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 no. We're in production, full-blown production. And we have, we're not in a concept. Our product, we, we have the products in our hands. All my, all my employees use it. I've got sent out to other companies. We're in production right now. We're, we're, we're stamping plastic out. We're, we're, we're going through putting our boards together. We're going through certification and testing stuff right now. We're there. I would say this, our strength is not just from a production standpoint, because we work with a very, very, very large, very large um, entity to make this type of thing happen. But it, it comes, our strength comes from the people that work with me, my employees with me, you know, my COO, my senior, uh, my senior hardware guys, my CDO, all of them. Some of these guys have got 26 years executive experience at companies like Toshiba. 
you know, they've been around. They, they're looking at things like not are we going to be able to deliver product, but we need to make sure that it, 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 everything, every part is proper. Right now, there is a there is a a, a, a shortage. <clears throat> Last year was a big the big cost was NVMe, and it was uh, like oh, there's a lot of big short shortage in you know DRAM and things of that nature. So a lot of products weren't able to get put out there, and the prices were very expensive. Now it's on capacitors and small things like that that we're running into, and even processors and stuff. We've had the foresight to sit there and go, okay, we're going to produce this many units, so we need to go ahead now and buy that stuff so we have it available to us because of its 16, 20 week, week lead times. So we have it available to ship to a consumer when we say we can. Because <clears throat> no thing is more frustrating than when you want to put a product out there for the first time, you get it in a consumer's hand, and they're already, they're already they have a sour taste in their mouth yeah. because it's two weeks late. Right, and, and, and something's wrong. You know, two weeks, in some cases, uh, even longer. And you know, I, I, it's just a question I feel like I need to ask because you know, you guys, you've put out successful products before, and it really looks like you have a lot of polish on this. So I'm not getting that feeling, but uh, glad that you can answer it. But Koi, I'll be honest with you, this hour is already gone. I didn't mean to keep it for the whole hour. I apologize, but thanks for coming on the show. Hey. I appreciate it very much. Look forward to talking again. Please check that video out, you know, when the new one comes out. I'd love some feedback on that. Sure. And then, you know, maybe we can do a recap when the product's already, get it to you, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Sure, absolutely. So, everyone, if you want to check it out, you can go to facetto.com, and we have a link to that in the show notes, or Indiegogo, for, and uh, I'm sure if you just look up Forum Project Indiegogo, you find it there as well, as well as on their website. So, Koi, until next time, thank you for coming on, and, uh, yeah, looking forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Have a great one, sir. All right. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye. And everyone else out there, thank you for joining us here on Computer America. It's been a lot of fun. And hey, catch you here next time because we have an entire week of Computer America, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, and cannot wait for you to join us. So hey, have a good weekend. Be good. Catch you here next time. Bye-bye, everyone.